Next up, we have uh, R2D2, my choice for best title, uh, Reliable and Repeatable Detector and Descriptor. Uh, we have Jerome Raveau. Um, this is joint work with Cesar de Souza, Martin Hummenberger, and Philippe Weinzeffel. And just a reminder, I will be serious about getting questions. Thank you. <clears throat> So in this talk, I will introduce existing key point based methods and their limitations. Then I will explain how our new approach uh, revisit the traditional key point selection criteria to address these limitations and how we can learn better key points. And lastly, I will present our state of the art results on two different benchmarks. So first I will present the problem we are interested in, which is about finding pixel correspondences between images uh, for instance, we would like to know where the red cross from the left image should be in the right image. And this is important for many applications like visual localization, pose estimation, or 3D reconstruction. To solve this problem efficiently, key point based methods have been developed. And the classical approach is to first detect key points at scale space locations that are locally salient, or as we say, repeatable. Then for each key point, a patch is extracted and encoded into a compact descriptor. The most famous key point detector and descriptor is SIFT, and it's still widely, widely used. And finally, descriptors are compared between the two images. So when two descriptors are very similar, it means we have a pixel correspondence between the images, and the resulting set of pixel correspondences can be used, for instance, to recover the camera pose. In practice, however, key point matching often fails and outputs false matches. So why is that? Well, one reason is that existing approaches only consider a single quality criteria when extracting key points, which is called the repeatability. So repeatability is, of course, important because it means that a key point will be detected at the same location across different viewpoints. But in this work, we claim that there is one more essential quality criteria that should be taken into account. And we call it the reliability. So what is it? Reliability basically tells if a patch is good for matching purpose. This distinction between repeatability and reliability is important because patches can be repeatable without being reliable, for instance, for repetitive structures. So to summarize in this work, we revisit the question, what is a good key point? Here are some examples to concretely illustrate the difference between repeatability and reliability. So the first key point uh, is obviously neither repeatable nor reliable. This one is very repeatable as there is a high corner response in the center, but it's not reliable due to the repetitive pattern. So we formally measure reliability by searching for the closest key point in the descriptor space, and then checking the difference compared to the, to the original one. In this case, the nearest neighbor is almost indistinguishable from the original one. On the contrary, this key point is not repeatable since there is no salient structure at the exact key point center location in the middle. But it is reliable because the most similar patch still looks significantly different if you look at the boats. Finally, here is a key point that is both repeatable and reliable, and uh, this is what we, we will be looking for. Here is the architecture that we propose to estimate repeatability and reliability densely at each pixel. At the end, we only keep locations that are both reliable and repeatable. As we saw, reliability depends on the key point descriptor itself. So our network also computes the descriptor at each pixel densely. Regarding the network backbone, we use L2Net as it is small and compact. We just modified it a bit to make it fully convolutional uh, so that it preserves the image resolution at all stages. To summarize, we make three main contributions. First, we introduce the notion of key point reliability at extraction time for the first time, which, is, which we show is well complementary to repeatability. 
Second, we introduced two novel losses tailored to learn these confidences from scratch and without introducing any bias. Third, we demonstrate state-of-the-art results on two standard benchmarks for matching and visual localization. Our network can be trained from scratch and obtains excellent results without even using any annotations. So here is how we train the network. We simply fit it with image pairs, and for each image, the network computes descriptors, reliability, and repeatability at each pixel. Each image is annotated with ground truth pixel correspondences. Uh, those can be either generated synthetically by applying random transformation to any image, or uh, image pairs could be sampled from structure from motion data sets, in which case we would compute the correspondences using conventional tools like optical flow methods. So our network is trained from scratch using two different losses. The first one is for learning discriminative descriptors jointly with, the, with an estimator of the reliability. And the second one for predicting repeatable locations in the image. I will first describe the joint descriptor and reliability loss. So earlier I said we measure reliability by examining the nearest neighbor, but a more form formal way of defining this is to compute the average precision, or AP in short. So here is how it works. Given a patch from the first image, we compare its similarity to all patches from the second image, that is one positive and many, many negatives. And that's it. We directly optimize the AP to train the descriptor based on the differentiable AP loss proposed by uh, Hay and colleagues. The problem with this approach is that the network tries to optimize descriptors at all locations, even in uh, bad regions like the sky or the water. So we modify the loss by introducing the notion of reliability, which is learned jointly. For reliable patches, the loss is unchanged and encourages a high AP. So you can see here for uh, reliability equal to one. And for unreliable patches, the loss becomes constant without any gradient, hence avoiding to waste efforts there. Here we show a toy example where we printed repetitive patterns on top of an image. And below we show the corresponding reliability heat maps estimated by our network. As you can see, these regions are deemed as totally unreliable even though our network has never seen such patterns at training time. Here is uh, some examples on real images. So first, the sky is predicted as totally unreliable, which makes sense. But the river is also found not so reliable because it's composed of 1D patterns mostly, and um, like repetitive patterns, like the pavement on the ground or building windows, are also discarded to some extent. Uh, here, we overlay the top scored key points as green crosses of the images, and you can see that they tend to avoid unreliable regions. This was for the reliability loss, and now to learn the repeatability, we rely on a simple self-supervised idea. So repeatability essentially means that the two maps obtained for a training pair are correlated. So we directly maximize this correlation. Rather than doing it globally, we compute the correlation at a patch level so that it is robust to occlusions, border effects, and so on. Here is the repeatability maps computed for these two images by our network. And you can see that local maxima well corresponds despite the homography. So I will now present experimental results, starting with feature matching on the H patches datasets. It contains 116 sequences of six images each that targets either illumination or viewpoint changes. And we use the mean matching accuracy or MMA as evaluation metric. It represents the percentage of correct matches for different error thresholds. 
Here is an example of two image pairs from this data set where each green dot represents a correct match and each red cross a false match. So we first validate the importance of jointly predicting the key point repeatability and the real reliability using an ablation study. When removing either of these two notions, the performance significantly drops. We also compare with the state of the art. Our method, represented as the plain green curve, uh, significantly outperforms all other methods overall in terms of MMA at all error thresholds. And note that we did not use any images from the HPatches dataset at training time. Uh, we also show our result without using any annotations whatsoever to train our methods uh, with the green dotted line. So even in these settings, uh, our method still outperforms most of the existing methods, in particular at low error thresholds. Finally, we present an application to visual localization on the Aachen Day 9 benchmark. At the time of submission, our methods obtain the top rank uh, on this benchmark. Now I changed uh, a bit, but it's still uh, in, the, in the top of the benchmark. In addition, our network is very compact. It has about 10 times less weight than the competitors like Delft or D2Net. And it also produces very compact descriptors that are four to eight times smaller than for those uh, methods. To conclude, uh, I presented R2D2, repeatable and reliable detector and descriptor. And we have introduced the notion of key point reliability um, at uh, key point extraction time. And we have also uh, proposed two novel losses that are super effective to learn better key points. Last but not least, the code is online on uh, our GitHub. So thank you for attention and don't hesitate to come to our poster, poster number nine, eight. Thank you. So is everyone ready with your questions? I see. Yeah, I see. Courage. OK, let's go. Hi, great work. I'm curious about the specific images where actually there is a lot of repeatability on the images, like just a building facade. Would that score be wipe out all the features and, and not have Mappings. Um, so, so you, you, your question is about what happens in like these images where you have a lot of repetitions. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, a good question. Actually, in the um, uh, Aachen visual localization benchmark, this happens a lot because you have. Uh, a lot of buildings with like repetitive structures. Uh, so it turns out that even to even if to the naked eye it looks repetitive, in fact you have some kind of uh, like details that the network is able to capture and which makes a patch actually more or less discriminative. So that's why in practice the reliability for this type of structures is usually quite high like it would be the reliability that is predicted would be almost zero uh, like in the sky but on repetitive pattern uh, we observe that if the pattern is not purely repetitive the reliability would be high because the network is able to capture like these tiny details that makes a patch uh, actually a bit discriminative So, uh, my name is Wen Xiu. Uh, th thank you for your great work. Uh, I got two questions. So the first question is about, uh, for some applications, the accuracy, especially the sub, sub pixel accuracy is very important. Uh, is the proposed method can reach sub pixel accuracy? Uh, yeah, and the second question is, um, so is the proposed method can adapt the multimodal data, for example, uh, one image is RGB image and the other is uh, IR image. Okay. 
so for, for the first question, which is about the sub-pixel accuracy, um, I think it would be a straightforward extension by like just adding some kind of deconvolution layer at the end. Like the network is outputting at the same resolution that the, than the original image, but I guess you could upsample that further. Uh, because during training, we can, you can have synthetic data with super precise annotation, and that's actually what we use to train the network. So I guess this would be quite straightforward. straightforward. And for the second question, sorry, what? The correspondence between multimodal Oh, yeah, data. right. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a very interesting point. Um, I think there, there would be no problem, actually, with this method. I, like, you would just need to feed it with image pairs, where the first image would be in one modality, the second one is in another modality, and make the network asymmetric. So actually, you need somewhere two network that, like, one is maybe going to uh, extract patches, uh, like compute descriptors on RGB data, and one other on another type of uh, another modality. But yeah, sure, I think it would work. Okay, I think Thank we you. have Thank time for one more quick question sure. at the microphone. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Um, thank you again for your talk, and thank you also very much for providing code. Um, so along the uh, question about other modalities, have you had an opportunity to uh, try your method on modalities that have low texture, like for example, thermal images where uh, feature matching can be quite challenging? Mm, okay. Uh, no, we, we didn't have this occasion. We only tried on uh, RGB images. Thank you. Okay, let's give Jerome a hand one more time. And we've got four more.